Hey everyone, Joe Menza here, and uh, welcome to the seventh episode in the 2.0 series. And this one here, I'm painting outside, and I'm using 11 by 15. This is the Hobby Lobby Master's Touch paper. You'll notice here that I'm putting in a nice blue sky using ultramarine, a little bit of Payne's Gray, a little bit of red. I typically don't use ultramarine blue straight and I like to put it on heavy if I'm going to do some cloud formations here and I'm using the kitchen towel paper towel roll and just dabbing away some of the paint and I feel like that's almost the best way I've tried many different ways to do clouds and uh, the reverse painting the dabbing away the lifting however you want to refer to it seems to be the best the looks the best uh, the only thing is you maybe need a little bit of gray underneath, which you can come back in with. Uh, it can be kind of touchy to have to do, but uh, you can use a little bit of this gray. And just kind of dab that out a little bit, just to dirty it up a little bit. We're looking to get a little dirtiness underneath the cloud. Don't have to do much, just in a couple of spots. You'll see on the larger one to the left, I'll take a little bit of this. I'm using a little indigo. I find the indigo to be a good color to use. Uh, instead of Payne's gray, it's just a little too dark at times. And I'm kind of going to kind of dab that out a little bit with the tissue. And you can see it's put a little bit of a gray underneath. Just enough. Don't have to do that everywhere. Just a little bit up in the corner. And this is just random. Typically, I have an idea in mind on how I'm going to start a painting, and then I'll start looking for what is the image that I start to see unfold. What would look good in this scene when I'm making these up as I go along? And I thought I'd take some brown here and just kind of swipe it on. And if you're painting from imagination or you're trying to be creative, just throw down some color and let the piece speak to you and unfold before your eyes until you can see a landscape start to form. You know, we have these basic ideas of the landscape um, that we can start with that uh, include, of course, the sky, clouds, and various other things. Uh, so we have that going for us. But as far as exactly what it's going to be and what combination, those things are going to you know, unfold before our eyes. So I would say do something until you start to see a landscape and start to think, well, what element would look good here? Now for this, the brown is starting to look like, to me, it looks kind of like rocks. It looks kind of like a cliff. And I think this might be the perfect uh, venue setting for a waterfall, which I really enjoy doing waterfalls. So I've been keeping a couple of bottles at the ready for doing textures and things like that. I have a small spray bottle of salt water. Uh, I just used uh, like kosher type salt that I dissolved in a bottle. And then I also have a container of uh, isopropyl alcohol that I keep in a little container. And I'll spritz those on in addition to regular water. And it breaks up the paint a little bit in a unique way. And uh, I think it helps create little textural things. So looking at this little cliff, I think we're going to do a little outcropping. Now that I have an idea, I might do a waterfall. I'm going to start having some shrubbery, some foliage kind of popping out of the, of the stone areas of the dirt. So we're just going to mix up some green. I use the yellows and the blues to make green and then Payne's gray to darken it. And I also started keeping a little sap green on my palette. Although I don't use sap green straight, I will mix it with other things. Mix it with either yellow ochre, raw sienna, Payne's gray, a little bit of indigo, and, you know, try it for yourself. I try to go a little darker because I'm looking for that contrast to stand out 
uh, against the background. Now, it should be said when I'm doing foliage, the brush should be relatively not dry, but you don't want to see liquid coming off. You want the hairs to be a little bit separated, the bristles of the brush to be a little bit separated so that um, they create a realistic looking foliage. You want little things to break up. You don't, you want it to be almost like a dry brush, but not quite. So there will probably be maybe about 20% moisture on that brush but you shouldn't really be able to squeeze anything out of it any moisture whatsoever okay so since i do plan on using a little bit of white i'm going to put a color background some indigo a little bit of blue uh, behind where that waterfall is going to come down and then i'm going to use my uh, doc martin's bleed proof white I've been using that lately, and I do recommend it if you like to use white and incorporate white into your paintings. Uh, I think it's better than gouache. I think it's better than Chinese white um, for using for water and even possibly clouds. Now, as a mixer, I would use probably a gouache or a Chinese white. But in this case here, when I want the white to kind of stand out a little bit, and kind of blend in with the other colors around it, I will use the Bleed Proof White. Now here, after putting in a good amount of brown or a darker color, I'm going to take my plastic card and I'm going to scrape away some textures so that it looks more rocky as we get closer to the water area. Now that that's done, I'm going to just kind of take a look around and where can I kind of uh, spruce up this foliage, just get a little more random uh, things going on. Just take highlight a little bit as a little bit of yellow ochre. I like to go to the, I've got lemon yellow, yellow ochre, and cad yellow hue on my palette. So I can jump in. There's different, lemon yellow tends to kind of lean toward the green side when you mix it with greens if you want that. The cad yellow has that bright, almost mustardy quality to it where the yellow ochre or even a raw sienna has more of that darker side of the yellow mustard look. So I'm just kind of scumbling on some foliage here. Want it to look natural. We're going for shapes here. Now here, and I'll take my fan brush and I'll look for little areas where I can put darks in. Um, little shadows underneath or underneath a rock to make the top of the rock pop out a little bit more. And then I'm going to take my fingernail and I'm going to scratch in a few little sticks and things.
Now the fun part, we're going to take uh, the fan brush and I'm going to dip that into that white so that it's on the end of each bristle and I'm just going to kind of bring it over and pull it down. Now we want to make it look like streaks coming down so we don't want to fill this in too harshly. If you fill it in, you're going to have to kind of go over it again. But I have another trick for that to show you as uh, I put this in if you want more streaks coming down. And then I'm going to have some splashes here that I'm using with the fan brush just to have the water splashing as it hits whatever's underneath. Okay, so here's the little trick that I'm going to show you. I'm going to take, well, you can use a plastic card. I don't seem to have mine on me, so I'm using the back end of the, of the uh, paint tube. And I'm just scraping away some of that. Almost like we do the rocks. Pretty much exactly like doing the rocks in a downward motion to create more effect. Now that that's complete, I'm going to put in a little uh, cliff parts sticking out for the... Because no waterfall is really perfect. There's little rocks and things sticking out that water might bounce off of hit or drip downward. You can see here now is I'm going to take paint a little bit wet. I'm going to hit it with a, just a little bit of water to help things run and blend a little bit. And then I'm going to take the end of that fan brush and I'm just going to pull down a little bit of white so it looks like the water is a little on the gray, dirtier side as it brings some of that soil down with it, uh, pulling down, eroding the rocks that are there. And wherever the little streams and drips of water would hit, naturally.
Now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my toothbrush and I'm going to flick on by dipping it in with a little bit of moisture on the bristles of the toothbrush, dip it into the white, and then I'm going to flick on little droplets just to create some spray effect. Just randomly keeping it in a particular area. You should probably practice this on a separate piece of paper before you start if you've never done it before. It's great for doing snow, water splashes, and other little special effects. Little flowers, maybe little white flower, wild flowers on the side of the road. Now well, the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put some added foliage. Uh, I didn't like the way those clouds were right in that spot, so I'll cover it up a little bit with just a little extra foliage. And just go around and finish up any little, tidy up any little things, put some sticks in, take my rigger brush, and uh, put some little sticks in, little branches and things, just to tie things together. Just very carefully doing some sticks. And that'll close this one out. A nice, fun, easy waterfall. People love waterfalls. I know I do. And here's the finished product. Well, thank you for watching, everybody, and I will see you next time.